Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. On the previous video, we've modeled this stylized mug in Blender, and now we're going to give it a texture, including an entire procedural wood texture, and also we'll work on the lighting parts as well. But if you haven't watched the first episode and created the model yet, you can first watch it. The link is on the top right part of the video and also on the description part. And then come back to this video. So do some warm-ups and just get to the blender. Now that we're in blender, let's add a floor to the scene. Press shift A and bring a plane. And then let's scale it a bit. And like this. And we should bring it a little bit lower. It's collapsing with our model. I think. Let's bring it a little bit just up to there. That's okay. And now let's fix the camera position and then we'll work on the lighting parts. So I think this view can be great for our model because the inside of the uh, mug also we can see it. And let's find a good view from here and then press Alt, Shift and Zero to fit the camera to the scene. And now let's select the camera and come to the object properties and let's change the focal length to 80 and press N and on the view part let's lock the camera to the view and let's zoom out a little bit and bring it to the center of the camera. I think this will do for us and let's split this part into two sections and also press T here to hide this menu. And press N and come to this part on the view part you can turn off lock camera to the view because we don't want to change it coincidentally and now press home to fit the camera to the scene and also change the view to the render preview like this and even we can work on the camera position a little bit to find a great view for our camera I think that's okay for now so Press N and in this part also let's check off uh, in the case of not changing it coincidentally. So we don't have any lights, we don't have any textures. First of all, we are going to add some lights and after the lighting part, we'll go to the texture part. Let's add an area light, press Shift A and add an area light, bring it higher. I think it will be good here and let's change the power to about 150 and maybe we can change it later bring it a little bit higher and we can scale it up a little bit press 7 to go to top of the graphic view take a copy of this one and press 3 to go to side or the graphic view and let's rotate it a little bit and then press 1 to go to front or the graphic view and find a good position for this one Again, press 7 and rotate it in this view as well. It should face to our model. And I think this will work for us. And also we can go to front of the graphic view and rotate it a little bit slightly in this view as well. I think it is good now and we can increase the power a little bit to about 200. Press 7 to go to top of the graphic view, take a copy of this one, bring it here rotate it a little bit to face the model from this side to the, from the left part and it should be our support light it shouldn't be that strong here we can decrease it to about 20 or even 30 i think this is good and the last light that we need is the rim light we can take a copy of this one rotate it it should be in the behind of our model to create some rim light and some lights on the edges of our model. Press 1 to go to front of the graphic view and bring it lower a little bit. And then press 3 to go to side of the graphic view, bring it lower even more and we can scale it a little bit up. And the power should be about 100 or even more. But we'll figure out the correct amount after we give them textures and materials. So come to the render properties and let's check the ambient occlusion, bloom and screen space reflections. 
So come to the shading part and change this to material preview and let's start giving them texture, my favorite part. Select the floor first of all and click on new and change it to floor and then I'm gonna give it a black blue color. Let's turn it down and we should change the color to blue and from the saturation part we can decrease the saturation to not be that saturated and I think this will work for us very well. And also we can turn up a little bit the roughness, just slightly a bit, not so much. Also we can change the color a little bit as well and I think it's good for now. So let's work on the wood textures, but first of all let's shade them smooth, all these parts. And after that we'll give them texture. So I think it is okay, select one of them and click on new and I'm gonna call it wood. For making a procedural wood texture there are tons of ways but we're going to go on with the musgrave textures. So press shift A and bring a musgrave texture and search for it and bring it here. And let's take a copy of this one and plug the height of the first one to the vector of the second one. And with the node wrangler add-on which I explained in the previous videos, you can select this one and press Ctrl T and bring these two nodes and after that we can plug the object of the texture coordinate to the vector of the mapping node. So again with the node wrangler add-on you can hold Ctrl Shift and select one of these nodes that you want to preview it and you will see the preview of the node you created. So we are done with creating the procedural wood texture and all we need to do is to just scale it on the right axis. So for this one we have to scale it on the Z axis a little bit. I'm going to scale it down a bit and you see it's going to make sense and create in the wood texture and it's really perfect and decent. So press Ctrl Shift and click on the principal PSDF and plug the height of the Musgrave texture to the base color. Let's wait for it to apply it and now you can see the result here. But we have to add a color ramp node as well. Search for it, press Shift A and search for color ramp and bring it in the middle of the Musgrave and the principal BSDF. And now we can work on the colors to change it to a wood color. So select the black one and let's change the color a bit, I'm gonna give it a brown color about here and let's decrease the saturation a little bit and bring up the value and I think it is going to make sense. And now select the white color, let's change it to black and it shouldn't be extreme black, we can leave it on the grayish color to somewhere like this and we can bring it a little bit near to the brown color and I think it is really good. So we can work on the roughness, press shift A and bring another color ramp. It should be our roughness and plug the height of the musgrave texture to the factor of the color ramp. And now plug the color to the roughness and let's flip the colors, click on this arrow here and click flip color ramp. And we can work on this to find a good roughness for our texture. I think for this one that's really cool and now it's time to add a bump node. Press shift A and bring a bump node and plug the again height of the Musgrave texture to the height of the bump node and now we can plug the normal to the normal. And you see that it's too strong when also we have to invert this. I don't want them to bump up in, and instead of that if they should be bumped inside the model. And let's decrease the strength down all the way and I think it is going to be good and better. That's really good, it should be so subtle. And now let's select all of these parts, press shift and select them. And at the end select this one that we gave it a texture. Now press Ctrl L and now link the materials and they all copy the materials that we gave for this one. Now we can come back to the layout tab to see what's happening on the scene. 
Also for this view, we can turn down these two options to see it properly. Now select the handle part and select one of these and again press Ctrl L then link materials to give it a material. So come back to the shading part and now for this time, this is the leather parts that we have to give them the material. This is so simple, I don't want to give them a complex material, select one of them and click on new and I'm gonna call it leather and I'm going to keep it as simple as possible, let's turn it down the color, it should be black and but not extreme black and for the roughness we can turn up a little bit and that's all for our level parts. Select the other ones and at the end select this one, Control L and link materials and there we go. And now we have just the metal parts, they are left. Now come back to the layout tab, select these parts and shade them smooth. And after that, come to object data properties on the normals. You can turn on the auto smooth to fix the shape here. You can go on with the subdivision modifier as well. Also add some loops here to make these edges really smooth. But I'm going with this method in this video. Select this one again, shade the smooth and turn on the auto smooth. And also for this one. And there you go. So select this one and come to the shading part and click on the new. I'm going to call it middle because they should be middle. And let's change the color to a grayish color. Just a bit, not so much because it would be middle. Change the metallic option all the way to one and come to the roughness. And for this one, I'm not going to leave it this simple like this. Let's add a noise texture search for noise and I'm gonna bring it here again with the node wrangler add-on and with this one selected you can press ctrl t to bring up these two nodes and plug the object to the vector and let's add a color ramp for this one as well it should be here and we should plug the factor of the noise texture to the factor of the color ramp and at the end the color should go on to the roughness and then we have to work on with the detail parts and also we can increase the roughness just a bit it shouldn't be too much for this one so come to the color ramp and let's change these colors a little bit to find a great result for the render and these are too extreme we can make them a little bit gray the both of the white and the black colors to make this effect subtle it shouldn't be too much and i think that's very good i'm satisfied with the result now select these two parts as well at the end select this part and now press ctrl l and then link materials to have this material in these parts as well and these nails parts should be metal as well select this one and from these materials that we've created select the metal and click on this four here to take a copy of this material i'm going to call it gold this should be different from the previous metal and let's change the color to a bright yellow color just like that and it shouldn't be too yellow we should inc we should decrease the saturation a little bit just up to there and now select the other ones hold shift and select all of the nails around the mug like this and i think that's down at the end select the first one that we gave it a texture Control l link materials and there we go this is the magic of blender and at the end select this one and come to the material properties press tab to go to edit mode and let's zoom in a little bit hold alt select this loop cut here and click on this plus button here then assign the texture to these parts click on new and i'm gonna give it another material tab out to go to object mode select the principal bsdf let's delete this and search for an emission texture plug the emission to the surface and now we can change the color to a bluish color like this and then increase the strings to about 20 i suppose 
and and also we can go on with the 30 as well i think 30 will be good as well mm, yes that's really good and the last parts that we have to work on them is these parts select this one this should be our potion i'm going to change its name to potion and the color should be a green color i'm going to give it a color like this and also for the transmission part you should be higher and come all the way down on the material properties and on the setting part you should turn on the screen space reflections for this one and for the roughness we should decrease it down all the way up to zero and also for the emission i'm gonna give it a color like this and increase the emission amount to about two or even ten ten is too much i think two is good and we can work on the color a little bit to create some color like this and at the end select these bubbles select one of them and create a new texture and let's delete this principal bsdf and instead of that bring an emission and then plug the emission to the surface its color should be a green color and the strength should be up to about 20 let's make it greener i think this is good now uh, select these ones and at the end select the first one that we gave it a texture Control l link materials and there we go come to the layout tab and bring another light it should be a point light and bring it here just inside the mug and change the color to green color to create some effects that it's the light of the potion and its bubbles on the walls of the mug and we can increase the amount and power to about 20 and for these lights select this light where's our main light i think it's this one we can make it a little bit warmer just like this and also we can increase the power to about 300 and it can be a little bit more warmer like this and for the other one it should be a cold color we can make it blue and also we can increase the power to about 70 or even we can go on with the 100 like this and for this one select the wood part come to the shading part and we can make the color a little bit more saturated i think it's desaturated a bit select the brown color and on the saturation part we can saturate it a bit and also with these ones as well we can increase the saturation a little bit slightly and at the end the last part which is remaining is our rim light as you know on the first part of the video i said that we'll fix it at the end so we have to scale it down a bit and find a good position for this one we can scale it on the x we can scale it on the z axis just like this and now bring it higher or lower and then increase the power to about 200 and also press 3 to go to site or graphic view you can find a good position for this one and you see that these lights on the edges are going to appear and that's the result that i'm going to create here and i think it is really good now also you can go on with these parts as well or you can take a copy of this one bring it here anything you do is up to you and i'm just gonna leave it like this because i'm satisfied with this one i really like this so this is the last result of the tutorial i hope you like it and enjoy the video and learn something and if you did please hit that like button to help me and my channel to grow and if you want to learn anything in blender just make sure to leave a comment about that on the comments part and in that case i will make a video for that as well also if you haven't subscribed yet in the channel just click on the button below to subscribe and hit the bell in the case of not missing any new uploads in the future so stay tuned see you on the next video